Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am back again with another ASMR mukbang eating show and today I am back with my hash brown casserole. I made a video a few weeks ago and I did a mukbang with my mock Cracker Barrel style hash brown casserole. Now that one was stove top and it was a little runny because I didn't wait for it to sit. I just had cooked my breakfast and I just like slapped it all onto my plate. But this time I actually made it a few hours in advance. I actually baked it in the oven and I let it sit for a while so it could um, get more, you know, like sticky and dry and not so much like, you know, melty and watery. <laughs> so let me give you guys a close up. Look at that oh look at that yeah i have a david's harry potter collection here to lift up my plate so that way you guys could see better i have to hold my four because you're gonna fall and then i put a little dollop of sour cream on top and so the way that i make this is i use cauliflower rice i buy the frozen bag and i put it in the microwave for six minutes then I add some, I actually eyeballed everything, you guys. I am not measure, measuring anything at the moment. I am not watching calories um, because I'm doing maintenance calories at the moment since I am alternate day fasting. I fast 36 hours. Yes, I know I change it up a lot. <laughs> I like changing it up a bit from time to time. So I am doing ADF now, which is alternate day fasting, which is you go 36 hours fasting and then the next day you eat. So it's basically one day yes, one day no, fast, feast, fast, feast. So on your feast days, you are allowed to eat maintenance calories. I prefer to do it with keto, but sometimes on the weekends I do splurge a little and you know, I might have a cheat day, but it's actually not considered a cheat since I'm doing ADF. You're basically allowed to eat whatever you want, but I like sticking to keto. So, but I do have the option to eat whatever I want on my eating days, but I love keto. <laughs> so cauliflower rice, sour cream, heavy cream, uh, onions, and cheddar cheese. You guys, this is heavenly. You guys have no idea how good this is. Let me give you a close-up look. See, because the, the last time I made it, it was like a little runny. But look at that. Look how good it looks. See, this one is not runny at all. This one is exactly how they make it at Cracker Barrel. So let's give it a try. Oh my god wow i made a whole casserole of it since i did make the whole bag but i'm gonna save some for david when he comes home because he has to he has to try this <laughs> i've made it before but like i said sometimes when i'm in the run i just make it stove stove top and i don't wait for it to like you know stick a little and dry up like this and I just serve it up really fast. But um, I don't like it runny. This is the, the real way to make hash brown casserole. Mm. Oh my God, you guys. I am not kidding you when I tell you that this is almost identical to Cracker Barrel. Like the taste is to the tea. The only difference is obviously the texture because it's cauliflower rice instead of potatoes but it's the same exact taste like oh my god mm. honestly ever since i learned how to eat cauliflower rice i don't really miss potatoes that much you guys to be honest with you i don't because i could have it in mash i could have cauliflower mash if i want rice i have cauliflower rice you know, if I want to use it as hash brown, as, you know, whatever. There's so much you could do with cauliflower. And I love it. Another thing I like about eating a lot of cauliflower, especially during keto, is the fact that it's a vegetable, it's a veggie that makes you pee a lot. <laughs> so every time I, I eat cauliflower, oh my God. <laughs> I do pee a lot, but that's also, you know, part of being keto because keto is a diuretic diet. So, yeah. 
but oh my god you guys and then it has a like the little chopped onions inside i don't even chop my own onions because my supermarket sells them in these um plastic containers that already comes chopped so i don't even have to chop my own onions i love it i just put it all in there i mix it well oh my god so good it's good and it's creamy because you know you got your sour cream your heavy cream your cheddar cheese is perfect mm. let me give you guys another close-up look at that look at that mm. yummy Like I said, I just eyeball everything now since I'm doing ADF. When I don't do alternate day fasting, then normally I'll stick mostly to like egg fasting or, you know, I always count my calories daily when I'm not doing ADF. I do less than 1,500 calories per day, so I count everything to the T, but... I kind of just eyeball everything when I'm doing ADF and just because you have to eat maintenance calories on your eating days because you are going every other day without food so you know you need to eat at least maintenance calories for it to work on your eating days mm. but I'm mostly on maintenance mode now. I'm not really stressing anymore, trying to lose any more weight. I've been in maintenance mode for like six months now. And I just change it up a lot so I don't get bored. And also so I keep myself on check because no matter how many times I change it, I'm always fasting one way or another. So if I don't do it, if I don't do a 36, I'll do a 20, an 18. I don't ever do less than 18 hours um, intermittent. 18 is my minimum. And, you know, for now, 36 is the maximum that I go. I have done before, like, 48s and 72s. But that's more for, like, autophagy purposes you know but even with the 36 hour fast it's not necessary to go that long but the benefits of fasting are amazing if you do a 36 it's awesome you still hit that autophagy doing a 36 hour fast um you know for those of you who don't know what autophagy is is basically your body cleansing you out eating itself getting rid of old cells, toxins, whatever, and restoring everything new, you know, a lot of healing properties come with autophagy, you know, any loose skin, um, anything that needs repairing in your body, you know, it's like my friend Angel was saying, when you fast that hardcore, it's, it's amazing, even your teeth get whiter, your complexion clears up more you look younger you look um you you're glowing you know you look healthier it's just simply amazing i do share everything about my diet on my social media so i'm always posting because i do have a fasting app so i do post a lot every time i do these 36 hour fasts or whatever and i get a lot of people asking me questions because a lot of people don't understand a lot about the benefits of fasting so they get scared and they're like oh you know i heard that it's bad to fast as long what you know what do you think this and that um look you guys you will not enter into starvation mode unless you are underweight or malnutritioned so as long as you have body fat you could go a very long time without food and nothing's gonna happen to you trust me okay i've done it I i still have body fat you know i could still lose a few more pounds if i wanted so i could fast as long as i want and my body still has fat to burn so like i said as long as you are not underweight 
then it's okay to fast for long periods of times like that, especially if you're doing intermittent fasting. But if you're in maintenance mode or you are at a normal weight or you are overweight, as long as you are not below underweight, you could do these fasts, you know, whether you're maintaining, still trying to lose. Fasting is not only for losing weight, but like I said, for the healing properties of it, you know, the autophagy. I love hitting autophagy. I love how I feel. I love the fact that when I'm fasting, after I fast, like when my eating day comes, when it's actually time to eat, I'm not that hungry. It takes me a little bit to break the fast, you know, like today I woke up and my 36 hours were up already at eight in the morning but I was still sleeping and it was like 8 16 when I looked at my uh, phone and I saw the time and it, my notification had gone off that I hit the that I reached my goal of 36 hours and I was like yay I did it again <laughs> you know but I actually wasn't hungry so I went back to bed so I actually didn't break my fast this morning till the 37 hour mark you know but but that's good that's awesome you know but it's crazy. It's amazing how on your actual eating day, you wake up thinking you're going to be starving because you've gone 36 hours without food. But the longer you go, the less hungry you feel. So I was kind of like working up myself to my breakfast because I was kind of like, damn, I'm not even hungry. So, you know, and you don't have to eat when you're not hungry. You know, don't think that, oh, my God, today's my feast day. I have to start, you know, stuffing myself already. No, 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 no. Take it easy. If you're not hungry, wait, give your stomach time because... You know, if you try to eat when you're not hungry, you might feel a little nauseous. Your stomach, your tummy might add to up. And when you start eating on your eating day after breaking a, a fast that's that long, make sure to start very light. You know, start with a yogurt or maybe a little coffee or something, a few nuts. Don't overwhelm your, your body all of a sudden with a lot of food because you're going to go running to the potty, trust me. <laughs> so, you know, start off little. And remember, you have the whole day to eat, you know, you could enjoy your feast day, eat maintenance calories, and don't rush through it. Don't be thinking, oh my God, I got to close my eating window again at, you know, like let's say 8 p.m. That's when I close mine. So I close it, I'll close it today at 8 p.m. And then I won't eat again. I'll go 36 hours again all the way till, let me see, today is Tuesday. So Wednesday, tomorrow, Thursday. I won't eat till Thursday, 8 a.m. again. You know, that's 36 hours. So, But, you know, take it easy. Just learn how to listen to your body and give it what it needs. And if you are not hungry at the moment, don't force yourself to eat, you know? Just like when you're fasting. If you feel like you've gotten to a point where your your hunger is really intense and you, you know, or you're trying to limit calories on certain days and you feel like you can't do it because your body is asking you for more food and more calories listen to your body and give it what it wants what it needs give it more calories and you know there are days that are going to be like that you've got to learn how to listen to your body but right now i feel really good doing adf i have struggled before with adf i've tried it in the past and it just didn't work for me like i my friend angel has done it and it worked wonders for her but I, there were days that I couldn't stick to it and I was like, oh my God, no, I can't go every other day without eating because some days are like really tough. So, um, so yeah, I did it for a while when I felt I couldn't do it anymore. I went back to egg fasting doing, you know, and I took it well, baby steps, you know, sometimes you got to work yourself up to things. 18 hours. That's, that's what I felt was the most sustainable for me. 18 hours intermittent fasting and then eat, you know, two or three meals throughout the day very small keeping it under 1500 calories you know like i said you got to find what works for you what you feel comfortable but yes i am constantly changing it but the only thing that doesn't change is the fact that i'm keto i will always be keto for life yes there are certain days that i might give myself a treat maybe on the weekends or whenever i want once a month whenever i feel like it but i will never leave keto i am a keto gal for life <laughs> so anyway you guys i hope you enjoyed this mukbang and I will see you on my next video. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. And click on the description box below for a link to all my social media. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.